From deep in the wilds of Pittsfield Township, Michigan, it's the Grace and Paul Potscast. She's a left-wing conservative Catholic homeschooler who loves to garden. He's a bearded computer geek who reads and writes like he's running out of time. Together, they're raising an ever-growing army of adorable children and planning the revolution. There you go. Yeah. Hey. So we're back. We're back. Did you miss us yet? <laughs> How will they miss us if we don't, <laughs> don't go, go away? away. <laughs> Just keep coming back every week. Yeah. Oh, it's you again. Great. Yeah, we uh, we were out last week, and so I just sort of pathetically stuck on the blog a post with a link to an old uh, file I made a couple of years ago. Which was great. I don't think you should call it pathetic. Okay, because I had been listening to it, and I thought, well, you know, we're not going to record, but I'll no. put something up. So here it is. So yeah. it's, a, it's a clip where I read uh, some chapters from Moby Dick. Mm-hmm. The novel. The novel. Yeah, not the screenplay. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, I, talk, I blather a little bit about Moby Dick and how much I love it. And no, it's a good book. There's some 18th century literature that is good and insightful and uh, uninteresting to read. And then there's Moby Dick. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, hey. It's very lyrical. It's very engaging reading. Yeah. And I, I think it is best read out loud. Yeah, and some chapters, honestly, uh, are hard for kids to get through. Yes. But some are just really entertaining. Yeah. They're like little plays. Well, I think some of the chapters are are wonderful, even for elementary school children to just read. I think excerpts would be just, you know, valuable learning for elementary yeah. school. But I yeah. think as a, as a literature study, I would save that for... For high school. Yeah, I wouldn't ask them to... I wouldn't read some of the chapters out loud because they're just going to glaze over. Um, like there's a chapter called Cytology, which is mm -hmm. all the, the natural history of whales. And it's really a very subtle parody and you know satire of the whole science of natural history. Uh, right. you know. Um, but to understand that, you have to, to know quite a bit about Right. Natural history. So, and, and so when I say high school, I'm talking about 10, uh, like yeah. 11th and 12th graders. Yeah. And this is not to say that I would disallow a younger child from reading it. Right. I mean, someone who's interested, go for it. Right. But I, I think that's the age group. So like maybe 16, yeah, 15 to 18 yeah. Yeah. is when I think children would be able to get into the story. And I do like a lit and understand it from a literal stand uh, yeah. from a literary standpoint. I talk about a little bit how. It's really written as like in three or four different styles. You know, mm -hmm. the chapters are dramatically different in style. Yeah. And so you can, you know, interpret, you can understand it in several different ways. Right. But it's, it would be, it would be hard to read it straight through to the kids. They definitely would be. They'd be dozing <sighs> off some nights and laughing out loud laugh other nights night. and you know and like what was that story again is that even the same story is it the, are, we this, are we still reading the same, same book what? yeah so yeah. it's it's a big sprawling book it's it's a really a work of genius i think mm -hmm. uh and some bits are up there as in terms of uh, the beauty of the writing with uh, anything joyce wrote or wolf wrote or, oh, you know, easily. Easily. so but it is it's a little intimidating mm -hmm. so this is a little hunk it's a little hunk of um, Moby Dick. Moby Dick for someone who would like to just sort of rip off a, a little piece, a, a piece, and hear hear an interpretation of it. Right. So no, that was I thought that was perfectly fine as something to share last week. All right. So I'll yep. try and get that up on the feed too because it's not a regular episode. Oh right, right. It's not like in. It's not in the feed. It's the just feed. linked from the blog. Right. But. Um, so uh, what's been going on? Oh, we go in there. We're, I think we're doing our walk, right? 
that's yeah where's uh, where's where's the walk where's the walk <laughs> so um i think it, i think I'm listeners flailing. know we've been, we've been struggling with our walk a week we've been flailing in so many ways flailing our flippers wallowing <laughs> <laughs> but no no it's it's this thing and it's kind of a stupid thing where we kind of have to drive for a walk yes i i don't think that's actually true that we have to drive for a walk i think to walk for exercise safely we kind of have to go to a space that's safe for walking for right. keeping in mind that we have a wide ra- age range right, we've got you know a, a new toddler and a, a distracted preschooler yeah disenchanted middle schoolers <laughs> And, you know, right. exuberant, engaged elementary children. And kids who like to space out and wander, you know. Right. So, so yeah, that's one issue. So it's um, challenging. So it's challenging. And it's sometimes hard to make the space to load everybody up and go somewhere. Yep. Um, but, but what I have done... Especially when they throw a tantrum over the very leaving. idea of leaving the house. Right. Like, the, the whole notion of getting in the car and going somewhere is just, it's too much to bear. Yeah, yeah. The um, what I have done though, we we um, we we've been struggling with some various illnesses, and just going out to the deck was nice. You know, like just <laughs> walking the twenty feet to the deck and breathing some fresh air was really special. We, this sounds so stupid, but this was kind of our walk the other day. Yeah, which is Grace got me to get basically out of my sick bed. You know, right, just, come on, man, and to go sit, go sit on in the, the sunlight, on the deck, even though it was fresh cold. Air. Oh, it was, it was actually, yeah, it was pretty cold. It was cold. quite chilly, right. but uh, sitting out there, just getting a little bit of sun and, and crisp air really was great, yeah. was really... Uh, re- restorative. Re- re- yeah, restorative, rehabilitating. <laughs> yeah, but I've I've taken a few walks in the woods this week. We had like an ice storm two yeah, weeks last, ago. Yeah, two weekends ago, we had a big ice storm, and we, we woke up, and all the trees in our woods were... Sweet. Top heavy, top heavy, completely top heavy, coated with ice, and then there was very little breeze, but they were swaying like dangerously, right. and, and a we number of lost them came one. down. Yeah, yeah, a number came down. One actually came down into the yard. It looks like oh, a big branch grew down. No, that's, that's an entire tree. tree. Like fell out of the woods into the yard. Yeah, and then you walk past and around that one. Um, there's a few. I want to say one looks dangerous, mm-hmm. but I think there's two that I think. I want to look a little more closely at that are that need to be um, un. They're kind of like hanging, and this is why I went through the woods to kind of evaluate the trees to make sure they were safe for play. Right before the kids pulled a tree down on top of them, on top of themselves, on top of a sibling, or some such disaster. Yeah, which you know, I the woods have always been my safe place. Right, and right. I've always loved the woods and considered it shelter. Right, and spent many nights of my youth sleeping in the woods joyfully. Um, but we don't want to leave them with a tree that's literally on the verge of collapse right, and right. have them h- find out the hard way. The hard way that there are ways in which the woods can be very dangerous, and uh, uh, partially fell- fallen trees is one of them. So I took a couple of um, tr- tromps through our uh, woods and uh, identified some trees that need attention and need some work. Uh, to be safe. Yeah. And um, that, that was, those were good walks. I, I yeah. was able to take them by myself largely. So that, those were good walks. Good. Um, and and you don't get any time to yourself, to be honest. Like No, no not really. It's no. pretty rare. No, I try to like scratch it out. but you That's know, no. like, you know, maybe on the pot sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, you can uh, you can have an interrupted interlude of as many as five consecutive minutes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Anyway, so oh, sorry, I was just drifting. <laughs> so, yeah, we it's been a it's been a slog. So a slog, yeah. So um, our topic, our whole topic this week, I think, yeah. is is a, a status update. It's a status update, and and to be clear, I've been thinking in the back of my mind about how we would structure the podcast to be most uh, valuable to the people yeah. who care to listen. Yeah. Um, and I think like a, a status update once a month might be nice for people. Like we mentioned things offhand. Wouldn't it be nice if we followed up a little bit or closed yeah. some loose ends? Yeah. Um, and I've been thinking um, that Chris should come on maybe once a month. And yeah, just, I'd love to have Chris back. Yeah, no, he's, he's really fun, really insightful. I love his perspective. 
trying to uh, recruit. I, I'm doing some work behind the scenes to try and recruit some other folks as well. Right. Um, especially people affiliated loosely or otherwise with the with the DSA. Right. Yeah, that would be great. That's and so, on. yeah, we're looking for them. And, and um, uh, so, uh, so like a so a crit a. Uh, uh, Chris Traver's episode, a personal update episode, yeah. a um, a research and reflect re- episode that we do, right? yeah, and then um, one other guest episode, yeah, right. So it's not that we don't have topics. It's it's like um, especially in a week that's been difficult, like a few weeks that have been difficult, like mm-hmm. this where we spent time sick. <laughs> um, it's more too many topics without having zoomed in and right. done a little prep. Right. And I really I really don't want to do a current events podcast. That, that's not where I'm yeah. interested in or where I want to take this. So I always wind I wind up like, oh yeah, I have this laundry list of of current it's things a, to right. talk about. But it's not it's not that much fun. It's not that right. insightful like I I can rant about, you know, I don't want to do Twitter in a podcast. No, I could give you an hour on I don't know whatever current event I'm hot about that week. Right. I, I don't know that that's valuable to our so, listeners. So I guess w- w- when we've done that a couple times, when there have been something, when there's been something current that we really felt we did want to talk about, mm-hmm. we've called that a hot, hot take, take right. episode. And I think that can happen and will happen in the future. That's okay. Yeah. But I'd really rather like focus on a topic and rather. And go deep rather than yeah. go shallow with a lot of current stuff. And so this is why also I keep wanting to um, finish books, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, review them. And and so, yeah, and that's and I think some of the current events slip in, and you know, you talk about them and move on. We, yeah. we can do that sort of shallow um, engagement. Also, I think that's like a four week month. There'll be fifth weeks. We'll do. We could do a hot take then. That's that true. Could be fun, you know? I, I keep, or, you know, as needed. I'm still figuring out what I want to do because, you know, I can talk a lot, <laughs> and I feel so oftentimes I. the urge to talk a lot. And so, for blah, example, blah, 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 in Saginaw, blah, blah, I was doing oh, a, a a series called Morning Valediction for a while, yeah. where after I dropped the kids off uh, at daycare. I walked him over to their daycare, there not daycare, preschool. Preschool, I'm right, sorry, yeah. uh, preschool. They had a Montessori preschool. Um, I then had a little time to walk in the neighborhood before I needed to be at my desk for like a morning conference call, kind of, you know, get my work day mm-hmm. going. I was working from home at the time. Right. And, and I took that time to walk around the neighborhood with my recorder talking to myself. <laughs> confusing the neighbors <laughs> neighbors were baffled yeah and i would do this like every day so yeah. so i have many uh recordings to, mm-hmm. uh, where i just talk to myself um yeah, yeah and some of them i actually listening back i'm like oh this was a really yeah, some of them were this good. was a good thing yeah and i i've even paid a guy a friend of mine to transcribe some of them and mm-hmm. then try to edit them into essays yeah and um, so I feel like I should be doing stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe I could be doing collaborations outside of of this podcast too. Right. And those could go in the feed or a different feed or, or something, you know, you know, hard to say. But I'm still trying to figure it out because I so want to be producing music. I so want to be producing podcasts. I want to be mm-hmm. doing all kinds of things, you know. Um, and, I did a something happened, which is I sort of for the last couple of years I've been logging everything that I read, mm-hmm. at not every magazine article, but like every book, every book, right? <clears throat> and like in in 2016, I think I completed uh, something like 54. 50, I, I books. think it was 56. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of books. Like it was more it than a book. It was a week. just over a book a week. Yeah, and. I was quite proud of that, and I sort of documented them all in my blog. Pride to sin. Okay. <laughs> what would be the word? I felt like I felt good about having achieved so much reading. Yeah, I was, I was happy. I was happy to have done. Happy that. to have done it. Um, mm-hmm. And then the next year, things were busier. Uh, 
Yeah. One of the reasons I could get so much done is because I was away from home half the week. And yes. so I had a lot of quiet evenings to myself. Right. 2017 was busy. 2017 was busy, but even 2017, I finished, I think, 26 books. Right. So a book every two weeks. Yeah. Right. And then I was uh, looking at what happened so far in 2018, because we're into it far enough, I can do like a... First quarter is a wrap. Yeah, first quarter report. Mm -hmm. And I finished four books in the quarter. <laughs> sorry. So yeah, like a book a month? Something like that. And I'm, I've got to go back through my notes. Like, did I miss, did I forget some? Maybe, yeah. And there were a lot of more books that I was reading at, but haven't didn't finish. Haven't finished in that like, quarter. Like right. I either abandoned or set aside or, you know, right. plan to finish or or may never finish. But right. But that accounted for some reading time. But it it was really um, it like... Was a, it was a bit of a shock. It was a bit of a shock how little I've actually gotten finished. Mm -hmm. And so I'm scratching my head like, wow. That's kind of how I feel whenever I, whenever I look back at my life on every birthday. Wow, that's all I've done. <laughs> oh my God. But I really, I really had this goal to like, I got to get through more reading you know especially more nonfiction, and more more classics and things mm -hmm. like that that i really have been like imagining that's you know like setting aside like i'll read these in retire when i'm retired or something like well who knows yeah, that's how that's gonna go yeah hard to say. but so uh but i did realize okay but meanwhile over that quarter mm -hmm. i've produced a weekly podcast mm -hmm. and that's between three and six hours of work every week, yeah. possibly more, um, to to record and produce that and get it all uploaded and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I also um, have been writing a weekly blog, weekly blog, weekly blog post. And some of those those uh, amount to, if I added that all up, I I think it's well over a couple hundred thousand words so far this year yeah they're long um mm -hmm. so it's i i think it's not actually a net loss i think it's a net transfer yeah where you're creating more media than you're consuming and i always hoped that i would get there at some point but still it feels a little but it's a little weird it's and, a little and it also feels like a loss it feels like a loss but yeah. also i kind of imagined that when I got to the point where I was like creating more, doing more writing than I was reading, mm -hmm. it would be because I was writing fiction. Oh. Writing fiction again. Yeah, yeah. And fiction is a lot of fun to write. Yeah. But and I keep thinking at some point I'm going to get back into writing fiction. Mm. But it's like, it's not there yeah. yet. I'm not, I'm not, I, yeah, in I keep that. thinking like, oh, I'm going to start sewing again. I'm not in that headspace. No, I can't. I've got to start sewing again. Yeah. I keep, yeah. I, I really, I hope I do start sewing again, yeah. actually. But, you know. But it was also good to realize, like, we list all, all the TV shows that we watch or something. Mm -hmm. But what people may not understand is that list, for me at least, that's everything. Oh, yeah. That's everything we watched. Right. There's no, uh, like, sitting in front of cable TV four hours a night soaking or longer soaking you, in some kind of stuff i need to be fully transparent i do watch townsend's videos on youtube with the kids well, and i watch hair tutorials okay so but the stuff i cover on my blog is stuff that i watch yeah yeah so it, it doesn't necessarily reflect uh what you're watching on youtube too right so and the townsend videos are Maybe fifteen minutes long. They're yeah, and and they're actually instructional. So. Well, they're instructional. They're historical. It's, I think they're really valuable. Yeah. Videos. Um, so I I yeah, feel like yeah. the bal like the balance of TV watching I do mm -hmm. is actually right where I want it, which is right. like maybe two hours a week. Just, hey, four. Go for maybe four. three, maybe four of mm -hmm. things that I sort of hand pick. Yes. So speaking of, I have a a report on a um, like a what we're watching. Yeah, what are we watching? We watching. So this is um, we have been. I've talked uh, in the past about these fan edit versions of old Doctor Who serials. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm trying to decide like 
I'm, I'm always trying to say, is it worth it to keep digging into the old Doctor Who's? Because, you know, they're not that good yeah. in many cases. In many respects, in many cases. Yeah. But I keep finding things in this. It's such a long history of shows, right, though. There's a, there's a lot to trawl through. That I keep finding ones that are intriguing. Right. You know, whether they really are successful or not, that's another, another question. matter. Another question. But yeah, they're interesting. But there's, there's some that are intriguing. So... <clears throat> These fit into the intriguing category, meaning not entirely successful. <laughs> and I think you watched these. And I, so I took the walk and, and you did the watch? Well, something like that. Sounds good. It's so always the, good so these would be fight. like, I, I'd watch these while trying to entertain the kids, keep the kids out of your hair for a little while, or so I'd put something on Doctor like Who and watch it. So this, this is a trilogy of serials. Meaning spans across uh, each one. Each serial was like you know four episodes or something like that. Mm -hmm. These are Tom Baker episodes, and these are from about I think these are eighty one, eighty two, mm -hmm. um, eighty eighty one. This is called the um, the uh, the trilogy. The three is sort of retroactively called the E Space Trilogy, mm. and e -space, trilogy. e Space stands for exospace um the tardis is flying along through the space-time continuum and i don't know jumps a rail or blows a gasket you know leaks a little coolant or something and uh Skids off the road it, it crashes into something called a uh, um oh what is it called uh cve a charged vacuum emboitment mm. <laughs> Emboitment. Yeah, now I, I had to look this up because they oftentimes in Doctor Who the writers will use an archaic word. Right. And uh, the actual word emboitment in English comes from French, obviously, you know, emboitement, uh, which refers to a, a hypothesis, um, the, um, the emboitment hypothesis. What it means is that. Uh, all living things proceed from pre-existing germ lines, that is, and then these germs encase within them the germs of all future living things encased within other within themselves. So the word means stacking or interlocking. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the doctrine is kind of is called uh, preformationism, mm -hmm. and it's this it's this old idea that basically says that like. You know, you're born with your eggs in you already, mm -hmm. right? Well, the idea would be the appointment idea is that your the eggs within you have within them more eggs, and within that, those within them right. yet more eggs down for as many generations of your line as there ever will, will be, be or right. can be or can be right, right? And it goes. It's like uh, when people. It's when they invented the microscope, and people like Van Leeuwenhoek uh, would like put look at a droplet of semen, and mm -hmm. they would see spermatozoa, and they would look at the limits of how far they could magnify these things, and they mm -hmm. would convince themselves that inside the spermatozoa, spermatozoan, mm -hmm. uh, was a tiny little homunclu homunculus. Right. right, a tiny little fetus folded up in there, tiny, right? Tiny, tiny. And then if you could zoom in even further inside this tiny little fetus's tiny little testicles, you know, there would be right. more, more, and more tiny little spermatozoans now, with, yeah. What is actually true Yes. is that when I was a fetus yes. in my mother, yes. the eggs that became our children were, were inside, already there. Were already there. Which is a little... It's a little mind-blowing. Yeah, it's a little mind-blowing. It's a yeah. bit of a mind trip. And that actually is true. Yeah. But um, and it seems like there's a philosophical sense in which this is true. There is, but right. it involves... This This view of things overlooks the actual mechanism of, of DNA and, you know, right. which right. we which they didn't know about. Right. 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 Which, and which the actual okay. mechanism yeah. of DNA and how living beings, you know you know form descendants is amazingly weird and and especially when you take yeah. into account what we're learning about epigenetics it's just mind blowing right. you know how complex and detailed this this is right but and then it seems to work yeah yeah so this is i don't know i i love to to get into these little um 
digressions. digressions. You're watching a, a Doctor Who, which is about the dumbest Dumb science show. fiction show, you know, as far as like the most, like the most cliched, and you oftentimes you think of it at least as the most like, oh, there's a bug-eyed monster. Let's run through a oh, corridor screaming, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. No, but that's... then they throw out like this terminology. And you look into it, and you're like, "Oh, this is they're like Actually bringing up a fascinating idea here." Right. And what was the what was the term they used? Like a something charged something. vacuum emboitment. Charged vacuum emboitment. Okay. Right. The idea being that um, when they pass through this CV uh, CVE, mm-hmm. they've passed in from um, N space, which I guess retroactively labeled space? normal space, into E space, exo space, so mm-hmm. a pocket universe outside the normal dimensions um, and then they they show it like they turn on the tardis screen and you're watching it and well, like well, well, well. and at first i thought wow the, the the color reproduction in this old like um scan of this old film stock is really it's, poor it's kind of sucks. no it's actually supposed to be greenish it's supposed to be green it was supposed to be greenish it wasn't just greenish because of bad video <laughs> technology that was the special effect, actually. Yeah, right, right. So e space is looks greenish. So we did mess up. We did mess up. That was no. A, it's that supposed was the to be green. Um, so the first one is called Full Circle, and this is the um, the serial where they introduce Adric, who's oh, yeah. the who's uh, this young companion with like a, a white boy with black hair, mm-hmm. uh, and who wears like a, a medal for math achievement, right? Yes. And yeah, he eventually. is one of, uh, when I look into like message groups and what not message boards, he is one of the most reviled companions of one all of the time. the most hated. It's one really too hated. bad. Yeah. Um, well, and he eventually causes the destruction of the dinosaurs. <laughs> if yes, I understand so. Yes, yeah, that's it. yes. Good work, Edric. Good work, Edric. Um, but no, people just, just slam his acting. I'm like, oh, come on. It, I, I always feel like it's unfair to slam child actors. You right. should... You should save your uh, scorn for the adults who did such a crappy job directing them, them. you know, yeah. usually. Usually. I mean, so Full Circle is not that good. Uh, there's some moments where it's really creepy and uncanny. The plot is actually quite complex. So it involves like a multi-generational thing, a lot of backstory and world building. And you don't see this a lot in Doctor Who, but it was reminding me of something of a, tr- a set of books called the Heliconia Trilogy by Brian Aldiss, yeah. which is, covers a, a planet where seasons last thousands of years and changes of seasons are the, follow track the rise and fall of civilizations. Oh, and so that's like a big story, and Aldiss like yeah. really researched and studied and developed a culture to go along with it. Right. Now, I'm not saying the screenwriters for this serial did that much effort. No, but... But sometimes you see science fiction that actually has ideas in it, and it's exciting, you know, to see. Ideas are exciting, yeah. Yeah, so um, there's a huge plot summary, but I'm not going to go into it. Um, so Probably for the best. Yeah, it's just... Uh, so this one really seems like it deserved a higher budget, because... The monsters are cheesy, the way things are shot and explained and all that is just, it's not that well done, but it, yeah. it has some good ideas in it. So the trope, so that's the first one. Uh, and at the end of this first one, Adric stows away on the TARDIS. Ooh. So he hasn't really become an official companion, mm-hmm. but then, you know. Wait, so do they find Adric in exospace? Yes. So they pick him up from exospace? He's, he's yes. And he returns to endospace. Yes. Oh, that seems weird. Yes. So what happens to is you know it's that this is the thing the e space idea is not all that um it's not endospace just end space. Oh, okay. But the e space idea is not very well developed, and you kind of wonder what it was for. Right. Uh, but what I think it's for is basically it allows the writers to tell like a really bizarre series of disconnected stories where mm-hmm. strange, crazy things can happen. Mm-hmm. And at the end, they can just do a reset and leave. And leave. And it, it'll be walled off forever in this right. little bubble universe that has no connection. Ca- causal connection with right. the... Doesn't uh, cause anything to change in the... In the overall story. story arc. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the first one. The second one is called A State of Decay. 
this one is interesting because it's a it's a quite a dramatic um, vampires in space story, right? Vampires Ancient in space. vampires in space, also like a culture, a stagnant culture, at a medieval level. Oh, is this the one with the five doctors? No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I was watching bits of this one after the Five Doctors, though. Okay. Yeah, so you may have seen bits of it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, the, this serial, the big threat is the great vampire who drinks blood by the bucket full. So you see, mm-hmm. like these, uh, this basement in a like a I don't know a Avatar. electrical generating facility or something that has mm-hmm. where they have hoses that apparently oh. and a big vat of blood. Yeah. It's like you know how a gas station has the gas the stored tanks? under the the tanks under this the street road level. Yeah. It's kind of like that except for with blood. Oh. How, <laughs> why doesn't it all coagulate? You're asking too many questions, Grace. Okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just saying. I, yeah, I was that's what I was like. What the Okay, that you can't store blood like that. Okay. Jeez. Uh anyway, yeah. so this is a crash, a crashed spaceship narrative, like the first one. The previous one was also a crashed spaceship narrative, mm-hmm. right? Um, spaceships been there for thousands of years, occupied by the original crew, have who have become the aristocrat rulers of this feudal society on this planet. Mm-hmm. They don't age because they've become vampires. They've taken their powers from the great vampire, right? Who is this actually giant, like physically giant being, underneath? the ground under the crash spaceship. Whoa. Okay. So, and you don't ever see him except like via x-ray. You can see like an image and it's this dumbest looking animated thing. Oh my God. And then at the very end, you see he's trying to come out. He's coming to life. Right. And you see this like hand the size of a VW bug come, come bursting, you know, the bursting up through the soil, you know, <laughs> you're like you're, you're, you're both horrified and laughing. Horrified you know. and giggling. Yeah, at the same time. The dialogue's pretty dumb. Uh, the guest actors, the three vampire characters, they're wonderful. I oh, mean, really? yeah. Okay. They're wonderful in that the, their makeup is is hilariously over the top. Right. Their on screen presence, their readings are really great. Mm-hmm. You know, they're fun to watch. Fun to watch. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm already intrigued in this R- episode now. Right. Uh, the scenery chewing, you know, uh, and the sets are really good. Really? Yeah, like huh. surprisingly good. Um, so this one's kind of fun. Also, I learned that, um, so this has uh, Romana in it, mm-hmm. the companion, uh, the second version of Romana, because right. she's a Time Lord. She has two different like incarnations, incarnations during the show. And apparently... So they have really fun chemistry during this episode. They're mm-hmm. like flirting with each other and laughing at each other and all that. And you're kind of watching a little puzzled because mm-hmm. usually he doesn't interact with companions quite like that. Right. Um, and you find out uh, that they were married. That, oh, the actors themselves were yeah, married. Yeah, he actually other. married this, this guest actor on the show. Mm-hmm. But apparently uh, that marriage only lasted about 18 months. <laughs> she, I th- think she was considerably younger than, than he mm-hmm. was. I, I don't know any details, but... Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so that one that one's kind of fun. It's mm-hmm. fun to watch. It's not great. It sounds fun. It's dumb, but it's fun. And mm-hmm. it's a little creepy and, and, you know... Well, any vampire thing should be creepy. Works in some ways. The third one, this is where we get really out there. Okay. This is called Warrior's Gate. Like all the way out. Yeah, this is from 1981. I should okay. mention that K-9 is involved in these two. K-9 is with them. Oh, yeah. And people like K-9. People like K-9. I never quite got K-9. K-9 doesn't really do it for me. I can yeah. kind of live without K-9. You know, he's yeah. funny, but it's like... like a, well, no, it's a one-time gag. Look, I have yeah. a dog. It's a robot. Yeah, huh? yeah. I, you know... You don't need to keep making the joke. It's like if you were making a robot dog for your Halloween costume and you had a budget of $20. Yes. Right? That's about how convincing K-9 is. Right? Uh, you know, especially in, in in 2018 when we have like Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and all this cheap electronics, Kanos and whatnot, you could put a speech synthesizer in K-9, give him a bunch of LEDs and motors and stuff, and make him... 
more interactive and like more convincing right. <laughs> than without all that much work, you know, right. than than they had back in eighty one. So right. So anyway, this is K-9's last episode. He doesn't reappear on in the main Doctor Who story, except he's briefly in The Five Doctors. Uh, he doesn't show up again in, until 2006. Yeah. And he has like his swan song where he actually dies saving a school full of kids. Oh, as any good dog would. Yeah. Right? Uh, he, I guess he's in Shada too, but we haven't seen that. That was an episode that... It was a serial that didn't run at the oh, time. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but um, let's see. Oh, he, he's in some spin-offs. Like there's the Sarah Jane Adventures, which we haven't right. seen. But and canines in that. Canines yeah. in that because he's more suited for a kids, a like kid. a young, like a real kids show. A real kids show, not a yeah. faux kids show. But yeah, there's a couple of spin-offs. There's like Sarah Jane's Adventures. There's Torchwood. Yeah. There's, yeah, yeah. And I've seen almost none of it. Yeah. Right. This is a weird, weird serial. So the TARDIS, it becomes trapped. They're already in E space, right? Mm -hmm. And now they get trapped in null space. And null space is just this white void, you know, mm -hmm. uh, somehow between E space and normal space time. Uh, another ship is also trapped there, which is a, a human spacecraft holding enslaved members of a race called the Therals, who look like really low budget lions. Ah. Right, like Cowardly Lion. Think Cowardly Lion from Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah, I, I walked in the room during this episode. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, there are some cool but very dated and primitive uh, video effects when people move through null space and they kind of go in and out of sync, go in, in and out of phase. phase, so they're flickering. And it's it's intriguing to watch. Um, mm -hmm. There's creepy robots. There's a magic mirror people can walk through. Mm -hmm. There's a slave uprising. There always should be. <laughs> there's this banquet hall that apparently uh, exists simultaneously at a number of points in time, you know, as you imagine things do. But, like, in this case, because of the way time in this null space is folded over, you can sort of move directly between the same place at different points in time. Huh. And so the doctor could be sitting at this banquet hall that's full of skeletons and cobwebs mm -hmm. and then like transition to the same room a thousand years earlier where there's a big feast going on. Like shift to this seat or, and be there? No. I, I forget how it happens. I think right. he walks through the mirror or something. Oh, okay. But this race of Therals, they can just walk through time like this. Oh. So they're kind of intriguingly powerful to be a slave race. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't make that much sense, honestly. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's not explained all that well. But it's, it's beautiful, right? So we know what's going to happen. The captives will be freed. Their fortunes will rise. The slavers' fortunes will fall. Um, mm. So it's not so much that like you're curious about how it's going to end. Right, right. But it's the weirdness and the artiness of this one. So this is like some of the most beautiful Doctor Who filmmaking I've ever seen. Oh, oh. And oh, it's, it's really dizzying, like... The idea of time and space collapsing and all space and this mm -hmm. stuff, you know. Wait, and they were trapped there? Yeah. To be slaves? Or? Yeah. Oh, like oh, trapped like uh, flies in amber at these in these slices of time, you know. Oh. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to quote. Apparently this was pushing the envelope, though. And so people who tried to do really artsy things with Doctor Who, like guest directors that came on, they found themselves getting a lot of pushback. So oh, Wikipedia mm -hmm. says Joyce, who's the director, was keen to push the limits of the series by directing the serial like a film, as he considered some of the earlier productions to be quite bland and workmanlike, right? Which yeah, I'd say, they yeah, are. they are. Uh, this approach caused Fair. problems early on with significant delays in order to achieve various shots, such as the pan through the spaceship and the opening sequence. So this included shooting the camera upwards where the gallery lights could be seen. This is known as shooting offset mm -hmm. and it is strictly forbidden by the BBC, right? You're not allowed to see, uh, even in the background, they don't want you to see like the lighting and the scaffolding, you know. Because we don't know that this is television? <laughs> it's, that was considered a no-no to like break, you're breaking the fourth wall. 
right? Uh, okay. If you shoot offset, you're potentially breaking the fourth wall. It's usually considered a mistake. It's like seeing a mic, a boom mic, okay. come down into the frame. You're not supposed to see that. Right. But he was doing it deliberately, you know, right. for artistic effect, even though, like, the stuff in the background like that would have been blurry. Right. You know, anyway. Okay. Um, so he had a lot of con- conflicts and clashes with the producers and there were all these nasty letters written back and forth and they, they stopped production on the serial halfway through. Um, Good grief. he was asked to leave partway through the production duties were taken up by assistant Graham Harper, who directed a number of scenes before finally Joyce was reinstated, um, Setting up certain shots that Joyce had envisaged proved to take up too much time, and shooting overran on a number of days. Um, anyway, so Joyce was, as the article put it, never to work on Doctor Who again. Yeah. So there. All right. So um, this is, hang on, making a note for myself here. So, um, yeah, this is like, it's it just... It's interesting to read this sort of backstory because you're seeing them do something that to me is like genuinely arty. Like they were really trying to do something different and it it worked. It It made the show different. different. It made the show visually intriguing enough to really stand out. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, they they had to squash it. So, and it's not even that out there, right? I mean, they weren't like, no, let's do the entire show. um, Like a second on a drug trip. uh, Right. Right. Great. No, they but they did. These visual effects added some moments of psychedelia. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they were only twenty years late on this. Honestly, right. it had already been done. Right. So <laughs> I'm not it, sure why it was controversial. Why it was controversial, but it, it did make it more interesting visually. And right. nothing he was trying to do was that out there as far as what had been done on television television before. Just, right. The BBC as an organization was very, very conservative in their production. We don't do these things. Yeah. Not here. So this one is, is interesting to watch. And some of the scenes are really like, you're really looking at the screen going, huh, wow. Yeah. And if you're not too fixated on understanding exactly what's going on, it's quite fun to watch. Oh, see, that, that would ruin it for me. <laughs> I need to know what's going on. Well, okay, so you get, you can get the big picture, but if you try and like explain exactly what's happening here, exactly what's happening right in this scene, like what what does the special effect mean is happening literally in terms of mm. what, traveling through time or what uh, you know what's it's you're gonna be hard pressed to make some shit up, but right. um, but it, so the arty elements though in this show they can't quite fix the fact that it really is mostly the storytelling mostly is actually bland and workman like like the right. like the uh as as mentioned earlier right yeah right so there it is but i'm always torn like was this really worth watching was this worth my time uh, maybe i could go for the vampire one the I'd vampire yeah, one is fun one yeah. even with the you know blood tanks below the ground yeah i mean it's not that graphic but yeah. it's just they just suggest well suggestive is enough yeah yeah so, but yeah, that one's a little out there because they kind of push the envelope as to how gross they could be. Right. Yeah. Right. This one's a little out there because they kind of push the envelope as to how artsy and, and like spacey the, 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 the could shooting be. could be. Right. And so these are worth watching, I think, if you're interested in the history of the show. If you're a committed Doctor Who fan, go for it. Yes. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. But if you were looking for something that's like really good by modern production standards, Hard you're gonna pass. you're gonna be disappointed. Yeah, it's gonna be a pass. Right. Yeah. All right. So that's that's what we've been watching. That's what, yeah, that's enough. I think. That's more than. <laughs> we we watched some episodes of the Next Generation too, but I think we're. Oh yeah, I think we're at time on. What we're, we're at time uh, and over on the uh, the what we've been watching segment. Yeah. Okay. So main topic. Main topic. So. Um, What's been going on for us? Just, we've had illness issues. Um, and right, we're doing like full frontal hospitality right now. It's, we're in deep. Tell, it's, tell it's us what that means. Oh, Without, so. I mean, it, I always feel like we can give away things that that pertain to us, but we shouldn't give away any, anyone else's secrets. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to give away anyone else's like uh, personal details. Um, and, um, uh, well, I'll, yeah, I'll come back to that. We're doing, we got a house thing going down, and then we've got some family updates. 
uh, yeah, there were four, I think, four general topics. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I think I'll do hospitality first because yes. I think the thing that we've always been low key about and not wanting to blow our own horn about yes. is uh, that we've all, we've for years now, understood ourselves to be a house of hospitality. Yes, and we've wanted, when, when Grace and I first met, we first, not literally first met, but we were trying to get engaged in cooperative housing groups. Cooperative housing and, you know, those kinds of things, yes. right? And um, a lot the, of our friends do live in co-ops and co or run co-ops and are involved in co-ops in some right, way. In some way. Um, it's good stuff. But um, I think since about 2010, we've uh, been listed on the Catholic Worker website as a Catholic Worker House of Hospitality. Uh -huh. um, our name is St. Am Ambrose. And we've had a handful of occasional guests that stayed very briefly a night or two or whatnot. Yeah, we kind of hope to have like interns you know like interns. Gard gardening interns who would just stay with us for free and and, well, you and know, also folks, collaborate on right, projects marginalized folks that needed some support that would stay long term. yeah, term, right? yeah. Um, and it didn't really materialize that way for us so we've um, done it occasionally right we've done it occasionally but i pretty much since 2010 we've understood that as our frame like, yes yeah, we're a catholic worker house of hospitality it's part of it's one of our um what's the word Vocations. Vocations, our charism. Such as it is. And so we, about a month ago, took in a uh, small family, and they stay in our guest room and have their own bathroom and, you know, are... They've taken taken over the upstairs, basically. Right, right. And, you know, are just trying to, you know, uh, take the opportunity to reset their lives. Yes. Um you know, kind of go in a new direction, get settled in in a new place. They're, they're not from, from Michigan. They're new to the area. Yeah. Um, the logistics, though, are such that we now have, during the days... Nine children in the house. Nine children running around in the house. Yeah. It, it's kind of intense. It's very loud. And most of them are under five. Yes. I think we have five children under five in the house right now. And there, uh, there's... There's, the way they're spaced now, the way they fit, the, like interlock, is there's one every year. Right. There's a so for the youngest five, they are zero, mm -hmm. one year, two years, three years, and four years. Yep. And then, um, and then there's a seven year old. Yep. <laughs> and you know, on up, but um, so it, it's <coughs> it gets pretty busy and pretty it, noisy. It gets pretty intense. Yeah. Um, for me. Personally, it's really the first time in our marriage where it's felt like I was in my parents' house, like the sort of the like, house you grew up in, yeah. the house I grew up in, that where I was like, um, there was just someone always coming or going. There was always something happening. Well, because you had neighborhood kids visiting too. Yeah, we would have neighborhood kids over. Um, at no point did my parents have all eight of their children living full time at home. Right, because by the time the 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 youngest was born. The oldest had left for school right. and was back. Would only visit. Would only be visiting. Yeah. No. The, the my mother's oldest child was twenty three. Yeah. Was that? Yeah. When her youngest child was born, he was twenty two. Going to turn twenty three that year. It's, it's pretty when amazing child was born. span. <laughs> yes. Very. I mean, actually, that wouldn't even be like shocking. I mean, he could have been having a child of his own at the same right, time. She was right. having her youngest child. So, with that kind of age gap yes right? we never had all eight of us under the roof but there was always no matter how many children were living at home there was always those children their friends for about 10 years there were um international students you know they took in um uh, exchange students yeah yeah so there was a it was always busy always people coming and going always something happening um kind of noisy Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, like a sort of a dull roar at all times. Right. Um, the it's there's a as it's always been in our family, there's a small number that just like to fight. You know, like that's, like to pick fights. That's, that's what they do to entertain themselves. That's their that, that that's, that's who, they, that's are. who they are. It's who they are. And it's those ones that you have to that that can take it out of you take it yeah that can really and provoke like just yeah by the end of the day right you know? and it, you know it's like the rest you hardly know they're there because they're, they're introverted they they, they and 
the kids are getting used to each other to the extent now that they actually really will play together. Really play. And have fun. And right. it's also, it's a, we're having really a ongoing sigh of relief because now that the weather is actually spring-like, right. although I hear from my friend Rich that they're having a blizzard in, in upstate, upstate New, York New York today. Um, right. Um, they outside. they can go outside, and they really are starting to spend afternoons outside, yes, which is so outside. so great. We What's just, marvelous? We love for them to just uh, go out, go 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 dig in some dirt, go dig in some dirt, go roll uh, around, you know, just go interview some bugs. Yeah, tell me what you find out. <laughs> yeah, and and they're doing that, and it's really glorious. Yes, some really. I was a Eleanor. This is and, the childhood we've always. To some extent, the childhood we've always hoped we'd be able to provide for them is yeah. just go. Yeah. You know, here's here's like a square mile to roam in. It's Rome. You know, go do your thing. And it's not really a square mile. No, not not even close. But it's it may as well be from their perspective. Right. Right. When you're little, it doesn't take that much. No. I I have wonderful memories of my parents. Smallish. I think it was like. <clears throat> oh, actually, it was about the same size as our yard in Saginaw, but just yeah afternoons basking in the sun picking flowers and right. digging holes right. you know i think it was five or six and yeah it felt like i was at you know in this huge space, space. well it's a lot bigger than you at that age so. exactly right. exactly um so that's been glorious as there, long as the trees don't fall down on them we're pretty happy that to have yeah, them there yeah. there's not a lot of yeah, we do have coyotes, so at dusk we're kind of encourage them to stay together. <laughs> stay in a group, yeah. Yes. Um, but no, there there are half a dozen uh, really perfect moments every day. That's great. Every day where they're yeah. just enjoying each other, enjoying the world, um, sharing a bite, sharing a chat, riding yeah. bikes. Yeah, but it's been a little yeah. hard for me though because I'm coming home and you're not been able to be on top of things and so I'm coming from my sometimes long work day and immediately walking into melting down children, children. a trash kitchen and like we need to make some dinner right yeah and so and we have to start by cleaning up the kitchen enough to make dinner and then clean up the kitchen again so right no, and, and so we're getting to bed past midnight and, some nights yeah uh, it's, and the last it's week been hard. has been really hard the last week is really yeah. really hard yeah the um there's some days that we hum and some days that are just kind of like, what just happened? Yeah, no, nothing nothing clicked. They, nothing nobody clicked. nobody would do their chores at a fight. Nobody would do... You right. know, when, they, when they're on and they, they have task lists, the kids all have chores and task yeah. lists. Um, when they're actually on and motivated, they can be very helpful. Oh, yeah. They yeah. can really help look after each other and help look after our home. Right. But some days they just want to trash everything and ignore every mad instruction. At just mad at the yeah. world. Um, so that's what I mean by full frontal hospitality. It's just, um, you know, baptism by fire, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's not, I mean, having a crowded house or lo- loud kids around is not new to me, but it, it crossed some kind of threshold. So mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I said, it's been a little challenging. Right. But I think we're, everyone's getting acclimatized. Getting used to each other, getting used to the the, the rhythm, and uh, actually, even for me, who for whom this is like a baseline, actually, yeah, it's, it's familiar. It's familiar to me. Yeah. Um, e- so even for me, <clears throat> I've still had to kind. Of, I haven't lived in that household. It's been a long time. In more than twenty five years. Yeah. So. Uh, and you're not you're not twelve years old anymore. I'm not twelve years old. I'm not I'm not one of the kids. So it's taken a bit for me to learn that rhythm. And to relearn that rhythm of being in this, you know, household that's always moving. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, and I think I think the reason the last week was so hard is all the grown-ups were dealing with gastrointestinal illness of some kind. And either low-level or active or somewhere in between. And that makes for a challenging Right, and ev- even once, even uh, like this weekend... Mm-hmm. I didn't like. I, I thought I was better. Yeah. But I still like just was slightly feverish, and my stomach was cramping and all that. So just yeah. like, just like, was taking these extra naps, which right. can easily blow your week. Blow the whole day, and in, in, in turn the weekend, right? Yeah. So yeah, you know, you wake up feeling like a zombie. You're like, great, it's my day off. I can do some lunch. Yeah. <laughs> you <know>? Exactly. <laughs> you just pass out and go back to sleep, and and yeah, yeah. So 
when you combine sort of like low level, no, no one's needed to go to the hospital. The kids have been largely great. It's just right. that, you know, kind of fighting through your own, your body's own limitations. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that makes everything just that much harder. And I yeah. think that's why this last week was just so like debilitating. Really debil- like it's just a long climb uphill. And right. we're still not there. No, we were all excited because yesterday we're like, hey, it's Saturday and it's good weather. Let's all get out for a walk. Yeah. And I, I fell asleep. I happen. just like went down for a long nap, you know. Right. right. And so, yeah, I've been on yogurt and um, I'm, I'm basically antacids. Yeah. Although we're busting that out tonight. We're busting. <laughs> Well, we made uh, you. You made uh, sausage gravy and, and yeah. I made biscuits this we had morning. Sausage, we had gravy, sausage, and biscuits. Maybe right. that should be our biscuits our, and gravy. That's what they call it. Yeah. Maybe that should be our podcast name. I'm biscuits. She's gravy. gravy. We're cops. <laughs> <laughs> that's only if I straighten my hair. Yeah, oh, that's true. All right. Now the joke is that if I straighten my hair, I look like Kamala Harris. Oh no! Then I'd be a cop. Then you'd be a cop. Right. So you know. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. So that's the hospitality. That's hospitality. And that's illness. Just that, you know, no one's weekend, no one's at well, death's door. But the weekend yeah. before last, we had a full-blown norovirus full blown thing, norovirus thing go through. We were really lucky. We dodged a bullet because it could have just blown through all, all, all the kids. Yeah. Which it could have, been have just been like week. a little wildfire burning from one to the next. And, you know, could have like... Imagine nine kids all th- all throwing up and <sighs> all loose at both ends uh, simultaneously. Yeah, that could have been very bad. Sort of nightmare. As scenario. it was, I got it, and I still have no idea exactly where I got it, it from. from. Right. I suspect it actually came. This sounds stupid, but from a takeout pizza box. Oh. Because sometimes yeah. these neuroviruses, well, a good a good portion of the time, mm-hmm. they're foodborne. Mm-hmm. but it doesn't give you food poisoning, really. It gives you a full-blown viral infection right, that right. blows through you, you know. Right. So it's not that the food was tainted. It's that, like, some there were some viruses on the food or on the container. Right. Because Which of, could be a Because maybe a pizza, steve. maybe a delivery guy went to work sick. Right. You know? And could have just passed on a stifled steve. <clears throat> right. Right. And then... And noroviruses are very... Um, aggressive aggressive that way yeah and then um we only had two adults go down you managed to avoid it despite sleeping in the same bed i, I skipped out one night you did sleep away from me one night and that may have been what saved you I'm um grateful for it but then none of the kids got it no not one but our housemate uh did the adult mm-hmm. uh the mom did um, use the bathroom that I had used and it, not completely scrubbed yet. I had been completely scrubbed. Right, from, you know... Sp- <laughs> from spraying... From vomit, basically. Right, that, right, And I did my best to get everything into a trash, but it really sprays when you're, when yeah. you're, you know, projecting. Yes. Right, so there were probably some little particles around. And that's enough. And that's enough. It doesn't take much. You right. touch it, you touch your face or something, and then you got it. And this, people, is why your children need to play in the dirt every day. Right. Build up that immune system. Build up your immune system to fight. But then she actually went to work with it. With it. And so, halfway through her shift went down went and down. was in the, in bathroom, the bathroom at her workplace. Like, and then just sitting out oh, in the car. What a, what a nightmare. Yeah, that, was, that must have been a long night. I understand it was a very long For night. her, yeah. Yes. It's not, you don't want to be trying to f- function while you have something like this blowing through your no. your body. Well, no, and it really... Ring, it rings yeah. you out like a and, wash rag. And I, I think you stayed You stayed home one day. I stayed home from work one day because I was still feverish the next right. day. And But it really, as much you as get like, through it pretty quickly. Right, you kind of move through. Norovirus goes through... You, like you get, 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. But in spite of that, it did like throw a monkey wrench that just kind of moved through the week. Somehow this right. affected my gut for the rest of the week, mm-hmm. and like that maybe combined with our un, the, our, our diet having been off the rails, yeah. Yeah. Um, just made me sick and you sick too. Like the next, mm-hmm. and not next badly time. sick, but just yeah, like just like not well, not well. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's been the illness trap. Yeah. 
you got you got to stay on the treadmill even though you're sick. Keep yeah, going. But I'm I'm really grateful we didn't have all the kids come down with it because it could have been a it could have been just like a stand by me scene night you know <laughs> nightmare like you know everyone. <laughs> To, everyone, uh, everyone, and then tripping um, the other person, tripping off. everyone off until it's less like, and then literally tripping on it. You know, it's oh yeah, awful. it was like imagining the kids sliding, uh, slipping and sliding. Uh, it's yeah. just, that's not. Let's okay. not go all the way there. Yeah, let's, yeah. yeah that anyway, was, that's enough. That's enough. We also have a house thing going on. We yeah. have a house thing going on, and this has been taken forever. I mean, it's been over a year. We've been trying to sell the house. Yeah. We've, well, so we got an offer. Did we tell people already that we got an offer? I think we've told people we had at least one offer. We have, have had more than one offer. We, we've gotten a total of four offers. Three of them have been just like... <clears throat> Serious low ball. Right. And we just, you know, just had to pass. Uh, we can just... Know? People are... Uh, we bought the house for 128000 Yep. And... People are offering us sixty. We owe about eighty eighty nine thousand. Yeah, just under ninety. And it costs something to sell a house, right? Like you have to pay all the fees and everything to to sell it. So um, we to uh, to break even, we would need to get ninety five or so. Right. Right. We'd need to have an offer for about ninety five, which would cover what we owe plus our 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 costs. Our our uh, seller's agents. Uh, right, commission, or, or, or commission so, commissions and whatnot and closing costs like fees for, you know register f- registration fees all this stuff mm-hmm. um we got a few offers at 60 which would leave us thirty five thousand dollars in the hole for the sale right and we'd have to, we'd have to arrange a, so- a short sale for that and you know but finally someone offered us 76 which you know we can go with it we can do and that if I I had to think it over, um, and I had to verify that that yes, my bank actually would loan me twenty grand to close that right to close at that, and then she wanted more of a concession, so I had to confirm that actually yes, I can borrow more than that. that so we're talking about borrowing twenty five thousand dollars to sell a house that we've already put a lot of money into. Yeah. And so our total loss on the house will be about about sixty grand, about sixty thousand yeah. dollars. So that's where we are. And and that was the good offer. Yeah. And, so so we and took it. The right? situation is such that losing only sixty thousand dollars and Yay. having to pay back a loan of twenty five thousand dollars over the next Yay. few years would be a win. Yes. As far as stopping the the amount of money we're the having, hemorrhaging. well, no, and we thought this was like the bot. We thought we bought at the bottom of the market. Oh my god! Well, how we, could it be worse? We thought it couldn't. Get, I don't know that we thought we were at the the real bottom, but we thought that it wasn't like how much worse that could it get, much. Right? Yeah, right. Oh, we can get much worse. We thought that we could at least pay money, pay down the house faster than it would devalue. That's right. what we thought. Right. That's what we thought. Basically. And we also were thinking in terms of, okay, our mortgage payment was low enough that if I had to be on unemployment for a few months, we could still make our mortgage payment, even and, if nothing else. Right. Which we... Was true. Was true. We, yeah, we had to take that gamble. true. I mean, that doesn't... Bought our way through. It didn't mean it covered everything. We had to, you know, we cashed out a 401k and all right. that. We had to... Basically, spend every all our savings and rack up debts to get through right. two periods of unemployment. Right, but um, but, but we we did we, we did. survived we it, it. We survived and we didn't it. lose the house. We actually didn't. We weren't we, even we late on a single miss, payment. We didn't miss any mortgage payments. No, and and we weren't late on any of our bills. Yeah, we so, managed you know, to pay all our bills. So, so it worked out. It worked out worked. well, uh, more or minus less. the unbelievable levels of stress and the financial hole, right? And the financial whole the crater you know but so but so since moving now we've been paying two mortgages two heating bills two water bills well we don't have water bill here but yeah um you know for for over a year for a year it's been a real hassle and so our what we're actually living on is kind of this narrow sliver that's left from these massive sets of bills bills and commitments so this means we're still living as if we're camping out in our house, like the kids don't have furniture, say. Basically, right. Yeah. And so what what this means, this offer means is now we have to jump through the inspection hoop, past it. Yeah. Next we have to get an appraisal. We'll see. 
We don't know yet. We'll see about the appraisal. And um, so, I mean, really, so are they going to appraise it for $50,000 less than it was? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Um, like just less than 10 years ago? Uh, yeah. Mostly. And that's, yeah, it's it's actually in doubt. The house has suffered some damage. The markets continue to decline. So, we will we'll have to see. It is slightly in doubt as to whether we can even get through the appraisal. Get through the appraisal. So, if the house can't even appraise for seventy six thousand dollars, I don't. That would affect a short sale too. Right. Right. So uh, if that's the case, there's not much more we can do. No. I think if that's really the case, if like the appraisal comes back and says no, the house is only worth fifty thousand dollars, like, well, you know what? Someone yeah. defrauded us. Someone somewhere. Right, like seriously defrauded us, right? And we can't handle that big a loss on our on our own, and we can't continue to try and catch this falling knife, right? Because what any another year it'll be worth forty, you 40 know? Or like, what? Yeah, I don't know. And so, if that's what happens, then I think we have to say, you know what? Here's the keys. We're not paying the mortgage anymore. Have you nice go sue us or whatever the hell you need to do, but we can't. But yeah, we can't do this anymore. We're the house. we're um. We're destroying our future security. Yeah, we're do- well. It, we and have destroyed. Our we have destroyed our future security, and yes. I think um, the only reason we're not we haven't done that already. Well, there's sort of the moral reasons of paying your paying what the debt you're wanting to pay your your debts, yeah, right. right? But there's also the the um, like sort of the last bit of security we have is you know our credit's in good enough shape, right? That you know if things change yet again. We right. can respond to that. Right. Um, that that would, We've this been would trying to, to avoid taking a huge hit to my credit, which right. has managed to get through all this Largely unscathed. pretty unscathed. Yeah, it's, yeah really so, pretty much unscathed. So that's why. And that, right. you know, so you might say, well, why are you so concerned about that? Well, one reason is at my level of experience, when I apply for a job, they run a credit check. They run a credit check. And if my Which, credit isn't sterling, they're like, ah, oh, this guy no, seems no. a little flaky. Like, and but and now, mind you, I should just say, running a credit check on you for a job—that's a shit move. That's it's just horseshit. It's a yes. It but is. It happens. Horseshit, but it is a standard, standard HR now. thing now to vet people in that way. Right. And it, I can see that it makes a certain amount of sense. Here's how it makes a certain amount of sense. Mm-hmm. I'm around a lot of very expensive parts and equipment. Hmm. If I really wanted to be skimming off parts and selling them on eBay or whatever or whatever to earn a little something on the side, you could be a risk. I probably could be an embezzlement risk. Well, and well, that's actually the only way in which I feel that it's a legitimate concern to check yeah. someone's credit right. is if you're hiring an accountant or someone Who's, who's going to be responsible? Right in the finances. Someone who's in sure, finances it w- and signing it w- checks. It would make a okay. lot more sense then. Yeah. So right. maybe you do want to know if this person's got a liability financially yeah. right. and would be a risk. That's pretty much the only way I feel like that's moral. They haven't even looked into my my Russian mafia connections. Oh, so I hope they don't. They don't even know about that. Yeah. Anyway, because they you know I'm actually a bot. Oh, has that been? How long has that been going? On? Have you <laughs> yeah. been a bot this whole time? This whole time. Oh my god. Okay, what do we got next? No, so the house. So that's that's where the house is. Where that's where the house oh, and is. we've got like a couple of insurance claims. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like this. Oh yeah, ridiculous there's, there, dance. There, so there's more to tell. Like we, I don't want to name names. We a couple times hired a guy to do some work for us up there because yes. we're down here with six kids. Now nine kids, yep. and the house is up there. So it's yeah. hard for you to go go up there, deal and do with a thing. everyone, right? Take everyone up there uh, and get stuff done, right? right? As, as such We've that I can it. still right. go to work. Now you've done it a number of times, but, but it's, it's hard and right. it's expensive. So we have some contacts up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of whom is a handyman, right. and we've relied on him and paid him. A few times to do some small jobs. Some small things. One of the small jobs was to drain the pipes after the city shut off the water. Or before, before. Okay, before. Right. But we, um, we were shutting the water off for a while because the furnace was going out. Right. And we didn't want to have water in the pipes 
during January and February because of the risk of freezing the pipes. Right. Without an effective furnace. So uh, so we paid him to drain the pipes and thought right. he did. He didn't. He didn't. We have a very expensive uh, broken pipe repair in the upstairs yeah. s- walls between the, the, the floors. Between the floors. So. And that, so that's, we had to rip out the ceiling, we had to get a plumber in, et cetera. And yes, yes, we have homeowner's insurance, and yes. That will be covered by insurance because we did have the heat on. Right. But um, that kind of thing happened. We also paid him to uh, replace a door into the basement, which was yeah. damaged and kept coming open. It hasn't happened yet. And he cashed the checks and just ago. hasn't done it. The weather's been bad. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Months. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So stuff like that. Stuff like that. Long, long, we also, long list of, And then there were bats in the attic. We had so besides the broken pipes and the leaks, um, we have bats in the attic, and apparently yeah. bats got into the heating ducts. Yeah. And a bat clogged up the air filter okay. and caused the heater, heat ex- the heat the, the to furnace crack. to crack its heat exchanger. Yeah. And so there's like a desiccated deep fried bat inside the furnace, so, so which sad. blew out the furnace. And it's actually not any cheaper to repair than it is to, to replace. replace. Yeah. So we have an insurance claim to work on uh, that. To We're work on bats, that. Our bat claim. So there's also the damage that they did to the insulation, Asian. and and they knocked out a access panel up into the attic, a yeah. vent panel, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot. There's so a bats lot to can manage. be destructive if they like take up residence in an empty house. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's not quite clear why, how they knew we were gone. I guess they yeah. listen. <laughs> yeah, they they're very good listeners. Mm. So so because like yeah, this place is quiet. But like, why didn't they do this while we were living there? You know, it's a good question. Well, it wasn't quiet enough. They didn't. Maybe it was too warm or know. something. Yeah, we, we don't know. But yeah. um, so there's that, and then it's enough. And then having the the heat out caused mm-hmm. a lot of cracks in the the plaster, cracks in the plaster, and so on. Yeah, yeah. So the now, the place has issues. It's got issues, but she did the inspection. The house is fundamentally sound. Sure, right. right. It's a fundamentally sound building. The roof Fun- is still in good right. shape. Roof's the in foundation's shape. still in good, in good shape. shape. Yeah. And like the plumbing's there, the electrical's there. It's updated in twenty ten. It's right. a fundamentally sound house. It's pa- it passed inspection. It needs a lot of Mostly fl- work on the floors, work on the walls, work on the plaster, the ceilings, and minor work on the plumbing and the heating yeah. system. Yes. And, and then another huge item, the insulation. The insulation. The whole, the whole house with like the weather ceiling and insulation major. needs major work. Major work. Everywhere. So, you know, um, it's a project, and if you're interested in a project, and she seems like she is, yeah. here you go. The, the woman who's making the offer now has lived in the neighborhood for a long time, right. which so, means she's aware of the house and probably has coveted it over the years. Over the years. And here's her opportunity. So here's her opportunity. I'm yeah. just sorry that we have had to, it's had to come to this state. Yeah. But you know what? We also discovered after moving in mm-hmm. an awful lot of things that the inspections did not catch right. and things that had been sort of carefully hidden, hidden and obscured by the previous owners. Yes. Like, and and not to mention the things they just outright lied to us about. Yeah, like the fireplaces. But yeah. The fireplaces, the heating costs. Yeah. The, you know, stuff like that. Probably the lead, too. And we found that was a lie. <laughs> yeah. Probably the lead yeah, probably situation, the lead too. Probably also not also accurate. So that's like, you know, we discover mm-hmm. living there that our kids have high lead levels in their blood. Right. right? Which one is that? That's actually, I think, um, Veronica and Eleanor. I'm not sure what's going on. Do you want me to go check? No, because I want to finish this. Yeah, we've not that much but, left. Sorry, yeah. we've got a. I don't know if it's being picked up on the mics, but I don't hear got it in the screaming mic. baby. Right. We have a gate, so there are people up. There are adults up there, and right. and Veronica, right, who can try and calm the baby. Down, right. But but she's probably trying to draw or something. Uh, yes. Yes, if I know Veronica. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so there's 
you know, we discovered that um, the house has lead paint all through it in many yeah. places. There were, there, were, there were several places. And this was not to dis- disclose to us. Right. But now, legally, we have to disclose we have it to, to disclose any it. buyer. Right. So I'm, I'm really s- kind of scratching my head, like, who owns all the liability of a discovery like this? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and how is it somehow fair that it all comes down to our bottom line? Right. It become, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it becomes a responsibility of anyone ethical enough to be honest about it. I think that's what it is. I, right. I think that's literally whoever actually it. winds up getting it tested and and now admitting to it for you know because we don't want to be sued. Right. Right. If there's a record, mm-hmm. there's a paper trail of the state knowing about this lead hazard. Right. We have. To, we're not going to try and pretend that didn't happen. Right. No. But we we did have it remediated. Yes. And that's not part of the record, too, that remediation. Right. But, you know, the remediation also made the house look bad. They yeah, made yeah. a big mess of the paint everywhere. And yeah, yeah. It was very sloppy. Well, yeah. no, the, the idea is you're supposed to get another professional paint job. Afterwards. Come, afterwards, right. right which we so, couldn't afford. So well, that's, yeah, that's that. the other other thing is the house would be in better shape today if we had been in better financial shape for the Before. years that we lived there. Right. For the years we lived there, if we could have, so and that's that's a number of things, right? Including well, the insulation, the co- a lot of that cosmetic stuff, and then right. insulation and so on. Including that's a number of things, including two periods of unemployment that mm-hmm. I found myself in, and also seven years of completely flat wages. Oh yeah. And so, like, okay, so who owns that? You know, who, who like... Who's, yeah, whose job is that? And this is kind of what I want to say about this is that, you know, like, you can argue, you can wave your arms and turn purple yelling and arguing that this, taking this on was my personal responsibility. Hmm. And I agree with that. It was. I signed the papers and, you know, I, I say me, but you too. We both yeah, own yeah. the house, but I, as the person that earns the paycheck right i see it mostly falling on me to pay for everything Mm -hmm. but so yes you can make that case all the things that could go wrong with the house were my personal responsibility sure and the and paying for the house was my responsibility all true however if the home values in the whole neighborhood are continuing to collapse right if the employers aren't don't give anyone a raise for seven years. Right. If no one can find a job, if the jobs are literally drying up day to day, mm-hmm. if all these unpleasant revelations are happening about, oh, previous owner lied about this and that. Oh, look at this secret, this nasty thing here. that you didn't know about. Oh, look, you know. Right. I, on and on. At some point, you have to say, hey, how is it that every bit of this loss is my personal loss. It's your personal loss and your personal uh, and, failure or something. And not shared by, specifically not shared by the people who sucked money out of this community. Right. Well, and that's, it's very interesting. It brings us back to this thing that is so consistent, so consistent. Right. All the losses are socialized amongst the individual people in society right all the gains or, or pardon me other way around other way around all the all the gains are privatized s- privatized yeah. right and then all the the so it's socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor right 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 where you know oh you lost money big bank well society should help L- share and let us make that right for you let's let make us make right you whole you. again let's because you're too big to fail right but, you know, you, individual homeowner, well, you know, sucks to be you. Sorry. And so, I mean, in, in a, we were really hoped when we moved to Saginaw mm-hmm. that we would not just shortly after moving there become part of the endless parade of people leaving Saginaw. Yeah. Right. And we held out, you know. As long as we could. As long as we could. We went through that stress of having no prospect of a job anything paying anything. near any, anywhere near enough to pay our mortgage you right. know when we found this house 
I, I arranged to work from home from my employment at the time. Mm-hmm. And the house seemed like an unbelievable value. Yeah. You were wise enough to say, you know what? We should still negotiate down and we should still try to hold out for a better price because right. this unbelievable value here in, you know, in Saginaw may not be that much of a value if you can't pay for it. You can't pay for it, right. So, so, so we did. So we did some, mm-hmm. and we thought we had negotiated we, it down. Low enough. Low enough. But right. So that we could pay it down faster than it fell on us. Mm-hmm. But we didn't. But we didn't. So that's a bitter pill. That's, the, that's a bitter pill. And, of course, what's really frustrating is, you know, people who did visit us and who came and hung out in our family room, Mm-hmm. 900 square foot room with a windows yeah. on three sides and we put in um brand new chelsea plank oak hardwood flooring when we moved in yeah always comment on what a beautiful pleasant room this was to hang out in yeah. you know with the, the large fireplace and the you know and we spent so much time in that room yeah. you know it's just it was even you go back now to the empty creepy ass house yeah that room is spectacular yeah, and yeah. the space that I worked in, it was also pine, uh, like a man cave upstairs, yeah. this pine floored rooms with pine paneling, mm-hmm. um, you know, had poor insulation, was too cold in winter, too hot in summer, but it was a really pleasant place to be with the light coming in. Yeah. It was very pleasant. And same thing with the upstairs bathroom, same thing with the, the you know, yeah. lots of aspects of living in this house was just really satisfying and gorgeous being right. able to, to get up in the morning walk the kids to school and then take like a two-hour walk around the neighborhood right. for me that was everything as everything. far as keeping yeah. my mood together mood and, health, and, and health together and and all that right and we had to give up all of that and so just much. follow the follow the herd trail to the of, suburbs yeah, follow the well Worn ruts in the road, out. out to the burbs. Yeah, and that was that's our. That's demoralizing. That's demoralizing. This is actually the first time in my adult life that I've lived um, further than walking distance from church. Right, right. Well, then our church closed down too. I mean, well, yes and no. Yeah, it was, that was another sort of urban Catholic disaster. But right. but yeah, no, there were still services there. It's just like they changed names, consolidated. Long yeah. Long. But no, I, this is the very first time since I left my parents' home that I've lived too far to walk to church. Right. And for 10 years in Ann Arbor, a place that is now closed to us yes. because of housing costs, mm-hmm. even though I'm a senior software engineer with 25 years of experience, yeah. it is closed to us financially forever, you mm-hmm. know. Um, even... For ten years, we lived in the city, more mm-hmm. or less. We uh, walked, you know, and lots we of places. we lived in an apartment, and we walked to church. Walked to church, walked to the grocery store. When the kids were in school, we walked to school. Yeah, you know. and that was yeah. a that was a nice that was a nice way to live. It was, it was and in the good. same way, there were many things that were difficult about Saginaw, but a lot of things that were really a nice way to live. A nice way to live. Okay. So yeah, that's the house thing. That's the house thing. Um, we've had some, um, we've had one major family event, um, a relative of ours has died. My sister-in-law in in Connecticut passed away just on Wednesday, just last past Wednesday. Yeah. This was not, um, a surprise. Not not a complete shock. It's It's been been expected. Um, yeah, it was an expected possibility. Yeah. Because she, she, her health has, she's had long-term issues, serious problems with her health long-term. Right, but it's never, uh, it's never, um, fun. never welcome news. Never welcome yeah. news. So, so at some point, prob- maybe next weekend, possibly the weekend after that. I think likely the weekend after that. Um, you need to make a road trip. We'll be making, yeah, I'll be making some kind of road trip to uh, to attend the funeral, and seeing you know family we haven't seen in a while. It'll be good. It'll yeah, be good. and that's not um, really going to fit into our. Plan kind of to budget. sell the house or our very restricted budget. budget. 
but but we have to so gotta, we'll yeah. probably be you we, always go to the funeral okay? we always go to the funeral we'll probably be borrowing money to f- to do it fix up the car to get you to the funeral safely right and it's yeah i'm still a little bit shocked i'll never see you again yeah you were had been hoping to get out and visit while she was ill still, yeah. recently yeah it just wasn't happening wasn't in the cards so the it um, just wasn't possible. The um, I'll just have a little too much uh, weight coming down on us. The there are other things though that are better news. Better news. Today's actually Pippin's birthday. Yay! He is seven years old, and of all the children, yes, all of them, he's the one who's like cares about his birthday. He's. This is why we're bringing it up because you know Sam is like, oh, hey, yeah, that's my, my birthday. birthday. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I'll see you later. Yeah. But Pippin's been like, is, is it my birthday, birthday yet? Is it my birthday? How many yet? more? How, how many more days? How many more days? How many three more, days? more months, Pippin. How many more days? <laughs> how many more days? Pippin is still two he, months. He's been asking how many more days for more than six months since Christmas. Since before Christmas. Yeah. He's been asking how many more days right. to his birthday. Right. Right. So. Like he knows that uh, Rocket and Joshua's birthdays are. Is the halfway point. Right. So from that on, he's like, wait, so how much longer? From that point on, he's like counting the days. Counting the days. Yeah. And today's the day. Today's the day. He's going to have his lemon cake. So he, we, we don't really give the kids gifts, but no. each kid gets to pick out a special meal and a special choice of dessert. Like, what do you want for a cake? What do you want for your cake? And Pippin shows for his meal. A strawberry lemonade cake. Oh, his meal. Oh, his meal. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Um. Burritos. Turkey burritos with bean and, and cheese. Turkey. So, like, we'll make some kind of ground turkey burrito He likes thing. ground turkey better than... Basic. Yeah. yeah. And it's then, very basic. But the cake was quite elaborate. The cake with, yes. A stra- and he's named it the strawberry lemonade strawberry cake. Strawberry lemonade cake. It's a lemon He pal- loves sour flavors. He does. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little... Funny, Great, Grace yeah. mate used to make uh, when she was working on a gluten free baking business. Yeah, she perfected a um, lemon a, pound cake. a lemon pound cake with a very tart lemon icing, which was absolutely delicious. Yeah, like really mouth watering, kind of sour. Yeah, and he loved loved that. that cake. That was his fifth birthday cake. Yeah, and so he's now. So he still remembers the he loves the lemon flavor. Yeah. So he, he, it's really asked for every year. Yeah. That was no. That was his fourth birthday cake. So you're making a thing with lemon curd. Yep. So there's a, a lemon pound cake, two layers of that, and then a th- central like filling layer of yeah. lemon curd, yeah. and then uh, strawberry frosting made with strawberries. Yeah, like blended up. Yeah, strawberries. pureed strawberries and sugar and butter it's a buttercream with strawberries i you had me taste the frosting and it's like a handmade frosting and it's freaking delicious it's sublime yeah so um this is going to be a great cake that's all i can say <laughs> dang i'm impressed with myself you're all invited yeah. no, wait, it'll, well, be, it'll be gone, it'll be gone <laughs> by the time you get here man yeah yes but now uh, this cake's looking pretty good and his basic uh it, like his favorite thing to eat are like a corn tortilla yeah with beans and cheese and meat yeah. And his favorite meat is like his ground turkey. Yep. Okay. He's such a basic kid, you know? So that's what we're having. <laughs> that's what we're having. Yep. Happy birthday, Pip. Happy birthday, Pip. Yeah, he's a, he's one of our quieter kids and mm-hmm. one of the ones that's sort of harder to get to know. Yeah. But so, he's such a delight to know. He is. He really is. Yeah. And he loves, he loves, loves, loves babies. So he, he always is. will hang out with the, our guest baby. Yeah. Yeah. Or his own little sister. Or his little sister. Or his own little brother. Yeah. Yeah. So when they're babies, he's all about the babies. And he also, he loves babies so much that he uh, you kind of have to restrain him in public from like approaching <laughs> yes. women with newborns, like running up and like, you're almost afraid he's going to just grab the grab baby, the baby out, of, out of and like, <laughs> hi, hi, it's me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I have to like kind of shepherd him over and right. say, this is Pippin and he, he loves, loves babies. He loves babies. He would him. love to hold your baby. I was like, okay. <laughs> You sure about that? Yeah, no, he's he he's, can hold it. He's good. He's good. Yes, and if you're not okay with that, we need, that's fine. It's okay. Yes, we just but, need to tell him. We just want to tell him that. No, nope. no, thank you. Please don't hold the baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, Eleanor is starting to toddle. Oh yeah, bit. yeah. She can walk. She well, can sort walk. Of, sort well, of. It's it's kind of like she doesn't feel secure yet, so she doesn't. She doesn't do it much. Right. 
She's she's got her very fast bear crawl, and occasionally yeah, she, will shoulder roll, and then get back up and crawl she, some more. She does like she. She can crawl. She doesn't do much regular crawling, nope. but she stumps around on like literally with her arms and legs straight. Right. And the other thing she likes to do that she where she can move around pretty quick is if you have something slippery on the floor like a right. laminated piece of paper. Right. She'll or magazine. She'll flop over, put her hands on this and get around like skate like with her back legs moving super fast and just sort of driving herself around like a little plow you know (laughs) it's fantastic it's right and so she'll rapidly get from room to room this way yes she has like an express service looks best eleanor service hello i'm here yeah and then like stand up at your feet pick me up yeah right so (laughs) she's here now pick me up she's great she can take a like actually walking she, I've only seen her take like two or three consecutive steps, completely unsupported. I've vertically. seen her make it across the the short distance of the kitchen. Okay, so a few a few more steps, right? But Which isn't that many steps, and she always feels like a, she, like, like she she feels so she goes down insecure. on the rear end a lot, and then she just sits down because you know, yeah, it doesn't feel secure, right? Um. Well, no, when we were, I was talking, so she's been seeing a physical therapist, and I was talking with right. her about this, and it appears that she's just, um, she's clearly strong enough to do it. Yeah. Like, when you, she holds, if she'll hold your hands and walk with you, she's solid, she's she's not even really, she's not using your hands. Yes. Um, but whatever it is about balance, she's not there, she doesn't feel she doesn't, balance yet. She doesn't quite feel confident about right. it. Yeah. Which, she can take as long as she needs with that. Right. And that's actually what a... What the physical therapist said at our last appointment, which we said was our last for now. Um, she's, yeah, she's, actually, she's on hiatus for she, on her physical therapy. Right. Because she's so firmly inside the normal curve yes. of development. I mean, so diagnostically, she's not outside the normal curve for anyone of what a, a healthy 15-month-old yeah. does. She's still very small on the overall child development charts. Right. But she's pretty squarely uh, planted in the middle of the charts for children with trisomy twenty one. Yeah, well, in in uh, for weight and tallest, yeah. tall ish. She's a tall dwarf for height. Yeah. Um, and uh, and in terms of uh, develop like physical development, she's um in the low end of the average range. Okay. Yeah, right. Good. Like many children are walking and running at right. fifteen months. Right. There are some children who are only just starting to stand up in yeah. 15 months. So. so, you know, for a child with Down syndrome who had open-heart surgery last summer... Yeah, she's fine. She's doing great. You know, we're, really great. we're really pleased with her progress. Yeah, I... I um, um, it is humbling to be her mother. Yeah, yes. she's uh, she works hard. She works hard for the money. Yeah, every so day. So you better treat her right. Right on. Or she'll scream your scream, her head off. Scream, <laughs> scream, scream. <laughs> Oh yeah, she just, she's not afraid to hold back if she no, wants something. No, no, yeah, no. You know, they're, they're, we've got the sort of quiet retiring types who are like, yeah, more porridge, and she's like, mine now. Right. So, <laughs> so that's not her. She and Benjamin are soon going to be just like it's going to be like pro wrestling pro up wrestling. there. Oh my yes. god, it, we're just we're just shy. Of yeah, because she'll and kick his ass. She really will. Yeah. She does not hold back. No. Um, so we, we are still in this place where I'd like to find a better general practitioner. Like this sort of like gut thing yes. is the kind of thing I might've called the doctor about like, you have any ideas? Right. 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 <laughs> Do we think, and I just is don't something feel like. something going wrong? Sometimes, something going... sometimes you'll talk to a doctor and they'll say, oh yeah, there's actually a, an outbreak there's of an this outbreak. thing. Try this, do that. Try this. And right. cause he's this, you know, the doctor knows if, you know, this last couple of weeks they've had a hundred calls to their practice. Right. And I just, I don't. I don't have that good of a feeling about our GP. No, um, it just so doesn't seem that interesting. That engaged. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, oh, you're sick, so why are you calling me? You know, like, hey, because <laughs> you're the doctor. I, you know. um, and um, mean, Meanwhile, I need to follow up with my pulmonologist because he was supposed to check my... Check your x-rays. X-rays and See blood tests. X-ray. And, yeah. and um, it does seem like improving the reflux situation has improved my cough uh, so, qu- quite a bit but mm-hmm. my need to use an asthma inhaler hasn't entirely gone away right and uh i and i ran out this two-week course of um prilosec mm-hmm. and you're not supposed to just 
take it continually. Just keep taking it. So it came back. Right. Right. And so now I'm taking a different, I'm taking um, another like over the counter thing that you can, that supposedly you doesn't, it doesn't have like a two week limit on it. Right. And it's helping, but I'm like, I got to, I, it's probably not a shock that this is happening. Mm-hmm. Like to, to ask the question is to answer it. Like, like, so in out. my, of all the things happening in my life, all of the things we've been talking about, losing $60,000 on a house, you know, coming home to nine screaming children or whatnot. Are there any reasons you might think of that you'd be having like um, heartburn, you know, just ask like excess, uh, your, your stomach bothering you? Anything? Just Maybe. anything at all? Off the top of your head. Like, <laughs> you mean all of the above? You mean my life? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So those are, these are sort of some open questions, and I know sometimes I can sound like I'm, I don't know, so anti-authority, like I don't want help from the medical community, well, or something like that. The thing is, when you fight authority, authority always wins. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been making, waiting to make Sorry. that joke? <laughs> it just popped in. But but no, it's this it's this question or this thing I always get into, uh, like say about antibiotics, like a physician will try to prescribe one of the children an antibiotic, and I'll say, what is the bacterial infection this antibiotic is to the specific is for is for treating, right? And they'll say I don't know, and I'll say, could you do culture, a culture, do a culture, and tell me what bacteria because that's that's now the actual standard of care for using right. antibiotics for using an antibiotic unless it's and, an emergency situation right only in an emergency situation where you are really have a strong you know this is bacterial a raging bacterial infection and we better right. treat it quickly right to get ahead of it right. that's the only time you wouldn't do a culture first right figure out what it is and then choose an antibiotic to respond right and in and in, in that case mm-hmm. you'd apply your first round antibiotics Right. You'd watch, and you'd still do a culture. You still do and a try to see, and then you might tailor your, you might tailor cha- your change your drug cocktail. Right. So the moment I ask any physician that question, so what? You become bacteria? a difficult patient. A difficult patient, yeah. or or like a difficult mom, or, or an anti-vaxxer. Now an anti-vaxxer. Now I'm an anti. I'm anti-antibiotics, and she's like, "What? You don't want to use antibiotics?" I said, "No, no. I'd like to know what right. bacterium." You're trying to fight. Right. That's and, all. And antibiotics have become a problem because of their a serious problem. use. A serious problem. It's a huge public health problem. And you'd problem. like to think that your doctor was on top of that was on research. Top of that and not contributing to the problem, right. for God's sake. Right. But um, so anytime that conversation about antibiotics or, or any number of things where I, say, where I ask what I think is a legitimate question, and I'm pretty confident it's a legitimate question. Yeah. Um, I get all this, like, frankly, ludicrous pushback. Well, I do find when I'm talking to a good doctor and I ask questions like that, I don't get pushback. They're right, like, you don't well, get any pushback. The, like, well, here's what we're working on and this is what we're doing, et cetera. Here's what, here's what we think is happening. Right. Well, the, the the best situation I've ever been in like that was when Benjamin was born and we were trying to find out, we were like really in this kind of race to figure out what what is this. Benjamin was born... With a serious infection. Like septicemia, right. It was actually affecting his heart. Right. Um, he had a high fever. You had a high fever. Right. And, and um, his heart valves were showing signs of damage by a bacterial infection. Right. It was, it was a rich, rough scene. Yeah. yeah. And he easily could have died in a place that gave, that wasn't so concerned about the exact you know the details that right. didn't sweat the details sweat as the much details. as saint joe's did. did right but, but they were very on top of it and took great care of it and, and they when did, I, yeah they, they did they figured out they figured that, out the bacterium it, they had to go to several special labs to find out what this was right and, and when it turns i asked out them, it was a rare it was a very rare, rare infection but it was also a hospital infection hospital infection right. which you know i'll get into that some other time yeah but the response then when I would say, so what are we looking at here? What are we talking about? And what are you doing to treat it? They gave me a lot of information. And one of the uh, bacteriologists like, came and said, hey, we were talking about this. I got some research you'd like and brought me several papers to read. Right. Which right. 
that's where I'm at, right? right? You'd like to know. I'd like to know. A lot of people are like, they don't want to read about the risks. Or, or any of this you stuff. Know, but like, he was happy to bring me the you papers. Feel, you feel much better armed with as much information as you can get your hands a- absolutely, on. Absolutely, absolutely. As you can comprehend. Honestly. And so um, I'm really happy to be in that space where asking the question is a forms colleagueship and not, right. uh, uh, you know, it doesn't turn it's the relationship adversary. Right. Yeah. But most of the, so that's part of where we're at with the GP search. I need it not to be adversarial right. if I ask you a question. Right. I mean, asking you for information can't be adversarial. Right. It can't become, right. you can't start treating it as adversarial. Because this I'm is, asked, right? I mean, the, the, this is the thing. The medical establishment has brought this on themselves. Yeah, they they made this bed. They made this bed because they started saying, well, you know, it's up to the patient to help manage the patient's, patient's medical care. costs, the costs mm. of their care. That's really, the patient has to be d- directly involved in making mm. healthy choices and, mm. you know, correct choices for their lifestyle, you know, and... And that, blah, blah, you know has blah, to blah, and blah. and so you know they give you all these pamphlets that say how to talk to your provider right? right because oh by the way your provider now has less than ten minutes to speak to you right well no what's funny when they don't so list here's is here's be your extremely tra- deferential when you talk yeah, to your provider but here, here's that. here's your training as a patient how to get the most value out of your healthcare in other words how to maximize profits for your provider, provider. right and right. the insurance companies that are doling out the the payments and it's it's pretty warped but the, so, but the yeah. net effect of this is that patients started you started not having a gp for life Mm-mm. you know or you know or even for in the 90s it was managed care you know right. and so you had like a, a primary care physician for prim- yeah for right P- pcp people still call them that a pcp right primary care and physician. then would you know farm off they, they would farm you off to some subspecialist or whatnot if you for needed this, some for that. extra right. they were the gatekeeper right and so you had to come prepared to ask questions ask and questions. ask to see it right and so for they, they created this reality right and now and now like you're like what? So you went to medical school? You can ask these questions. What do you know about this situation? <sighs> well, I it really I've been doing some reading. You <laughs> know what? I've just discovered. What's that? I've here's what you say. What I've just discovered is that I've read more about this than you have. That's what I've just discovered. <laughs> yeah, and I know. You know, I'm. I know. Believe me, I, I know how much physicians have to read and study to get through medical school. It's a lot. It's a mountain of it, work. It's, it's like six feet of it's hard to even books imagine. and documentation. It's hard to even like yeah, it's hard to even imagine how much material you have to get through and master to to and really master to 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 get a, a medical degree from one of the more prestigious and reputable and demanding medical schools. Right. It's hard to imagine. It's a lot. It's it's an much. impressive achievement to get an MD in you know, today from one of these places. Mm -hmm. However, if you get your MD today and you don't study medicine anymore. But only practice. But only practice. In 20 years, you don't know a lot. Right. There's a lot you're missing. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. There's a lot of information that you don't have at hand. Do you remember the name of the bacteria? Because I was wrecking my brain. Oh, gosh. Oh, dear. I know it's in my notes, but... Aerococcus urinae. Aerococcus, that's it. Oh, yeah, I've been, I've been racking my brains trying, yeah. to, trying to remember the name of this bacteria. Aerococcus uh, urinae. As it's far a, as we know, it, Benjamin is the only pediatric, pediatric presentation of this bacterium. Ever. Ever. There yeah. was nothing in the literature as a pediatric case. It, and it, it's usually, I think from the literature, we, we learned that this infection is usually found in the urinary tracts of like sick Men with HIV. Yeah, elder, yeah, elder men with HIV. Yeah, and so, because it's it's like um, it, it's uh, it's a bacterium that the immune system of healthy people is normally pretty good at fighting off. Right. Right. And so you didn't need antibiotics for it. I, I had a short three day course because I had a, th- I had a huge fever. You had a high fever. You had a three day course, but you didn't right. have any long term anything from it. You got no. over it quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, 
So it, Benjamin it's, was it's in, found in the elderly right. and in infants, you know. Well, not, not found in infants. Not right. found in infants, but right. it is now. It is so now. this was this was an infection somehow that you picked up somewhere in a um, Either exam, a, an exam a, pre, in an a week or, earlier, right? And it incubated in you for and in him for a week, right? And at this point, it was by the time I went to try to deliver, right? It was. Starting to just blow up. Starting to blow up. Right, where I was, and so he yeah. wasn't healthy enough to be delivered through the the, the, the usual, usual way. course. Yeah, he was not. So that was not a vaginal delivery. That was an emergency C. Yeah, because I was, I started vomiting. I was shaking. I was, you know, all yeah, the sort of like acute heart, bacterial and, infection. And his heart rate was all wacky. It was wacky. It was it was a mess. Yeah. Um. So, um. But mind you, at no point. This is the thing that was really a grace through the whole experience. Yes. At no point. Did he look sick? He was delivered and looked like a healthy, really right. vital right. newborn. Right. He had a high fever. Yes. Um, and they brought it down, and they gave him the antibiotics right away. And the, and we fought the infection or overtook the infection. Right. But his whole ten days in the hospital, yes. he was a happy, cuddly, good to go newborn. It was still traumatic for him to have this happen. This IV, yeah. And and yeah, have an IV in his head and get these infusions over the course of ten, ten days. days. So it was right? a ten. It was a real. It was slog. a slog, and yeah. and we believe that this actually did some real. It, it helped shape him. You know, it helped shape like, him. It helped shape him in some significant ways. I think. And he was for his first few years, he was extremely needy and of, clingy. of and clingy yeah. of, of you, yeah. in a way that the other kids were just not. weren't. Right. All, all my other children, by their first birthday, yeah. they had gotten out of my lap and were just off and running. Yeah, He was walking, but yeah. I couldn't be out of the room for me. Right. And, and usually had to be in my arms. Was shockingly clingy, and this really was dragging for us, right. honestly. Right. But, so unlike his siblings, who were yeah. off and running at a year at their first right. birthday, he was three. Three, yeah, yeah. Before he was like off in that way. And we think this may have had something to do with the fact that basically every time he left your arms there was in his some first ten, day of, 10 days of life, they stuck more needles in him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the, so the idea of leaving your arms was scary. It was scary. We in don't a, like have... in a, Well, no, it, it makes sense in this sort of like primal way. Right. Like, right. you know, I can't do that. That's not right. safe. And we still don't know. He's, he's now a very aggressive child. Aggressive for you. Well... For our kids. <laughs> For our kids. Well, he's he a, picks fights, and he demands what he wants, and he'll rip it out of people's hands and, and fight them for pretend it. Pretend he can't hear you. And, right. And I don't, we don't know whether that is personality or that was in any way shaped by his experience or by, like, did he suffer any kind it, of organic brain damage or something? It's hard something? to say. We don't know. But yeah. we do, we, the clinginess definitely seems like Without it question. was probably tightly related to tightly this related to, to this traumatic this birth trauma yeah and he must have been um it's hard to to say honestly how how much he could remember how much would shape his experience mm-hmm. but before he was even out mm-hmm. he was very sick in there he was fighting right you know to keep his heart going right and that must do something it's, it, it's an experience that you have yeah it's part it of gets you know. encoded in there somewhere how right. it manifest i really can't say I can't say or can't predict. it's i doubt you could ever remember it consciously oh know? no I, I, how would you right under regression like or something but, yeah yeah you know, which also is a little woo for me but you know whatever but you don't know but it it has something right some no i i don't i so i'm effect. not really woo woo right? right but um i'm open to hearing any you know any explanation right yeah i'm well, open pe- to people probably don't believe me but i remember the sound of being uh, inside uh, of of being a, a fetus. Oh, right. I, oh, rem- yeah. I remember I sounds, sounds from before I was born. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember anything else. Right. Oh, I don't remember enough. my birth. You know. Mm-hmm. But I remember Locked sounds, and mm-hmm. because I've always been very oriented around sound. Right. Sound sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's actually this whole conversation, right? Yeah. Which was about like find, trying to find good, uh, a solid, trusted medical professional. And I think the specific tangent I went on was, I know I seem like I'm always ready to fight about this, right? Right. Um, actually, I want a medical professional because I'm not a physician. Right. And I would like right. a physician 
to provide me medical care. Right. Right. And not have to provide your own. And not have to provide my own. Not have to do your own R and D. Right. And investigate your. That own would be nice. Illnesses. I want to ask the questions, and I want a professional that yeah. has the answers. But yeah, like and is, and is uh, what is it humble enough? To say that she doesn't know if she doesn't know. Yeah. Right? I, you know, we're, we're happy to be told, honestly. Yeah, no, and you know fine. what? Because like this past weekend, I wasn't sick enough to see a doctor. But we did, you know, you like read up on uh, s- some details. And you're like, oh, yeah, this must have been a an norovirus. norovirus right. right. But we're happy to be told when we don't know. So like we yeah. had with Benjamin, remember when his face was so red or his oh, cheeks. yeah. Right. So, and, and we're like, we took what's him to the doctor. Kid? We're like, what's up with this kid? And she's, oh, yeah, this is fifth disease, disease. called slap cheek disease or right. whatever you call it. Right. Because it looks like someone and we're slapped like, his little cheeks. We're like, that's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. And apparently that's a thing. There's a very specific childhood virus right. that makes you look like someone just slapped you really hard right. on both cheeks. <laughs> exactly. You're like, wow. There you go. There you go. There it is. And that was exactly yeah. what he had. And uh, it, you know, gave it went through its progression exactly as she predicted. So. Right. And then it was, it was off. Yeah. Um, but so in that same vein, I'm actually still looking for, um, trying to find a good place to get evaluations for our kids on the spectrum so that they can get appropriate supports from the school system, which we pay for. We still have not so, able, yeah. been able to get speech therapy. For right. two of our kids that need speech that therapy. Parents, like really need speech therapy. Yeah, really need. I mean, I, I don't think, it's not that they won't be able to communicate. It's just no. that it really would help them. It would help them in some serious ways. And and I, I was able to get speech therapy as a child, and that's why I'm reasonably good at talking today. I, was, I had a terrible stutter. I was not Sam unintelligible. Ha- Sam has this low muscle tone. I was never diagnosed with that. I don't know that people knew what was up with me. Mm-hmm. I was diagnosed as being, you know, clumsy. My mom had a book, right. The Clumsy Child, right, which right. I would read, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, I was terribly uncoordinated. And I got free care at the Erie County Crippled Children's Society. She right. took me once a week. And they had me do tumbling and hit a ball with a stick and whatnot. All these, and I never sort of was going to be right. uh, like a a baseball player. And that's not the point. The but point I, isn't to make you an athlete. But I did get improve my basics enough mm-hmm. to the point where I could like take a uh, take a tai chi class and mm-hmm. not look like a fool. And right. I could uh, bike all the time and not mm-hmm. fall over all the time, right, know, right? Right. And even mountain bike, you know, right? And only right. crash occasionally. occasionally. <laughs> not any more than anyone not, else. Not any more than any other, you know, beginning and, mountain bike. Yeah, and my stutter was pretty severe. Yeah. And I think you only hear it now if I'm tired. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. yeah. But um, well, it's it's actually I only notice it ever as a oh, kind of a mumble. Yeah. Had tend to mumble when you're tired. So that's, but that's because I was able to get these services yeah. as a child. I never got speech therapy, but I had, when I had a landscaping job when I was 14, mm-hmm. um, the woman who was who hired me made it her mission to get me to enunciate. To get me oh, to speak clearly. Speak clearly. And she would give me things to actually dictate and all this. And like I would practice with her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I would re- recite bits from Shakespeare and whatnot. Oh, nice. And then what she didn't finish working at a radio station did. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Well, there's all these things that, because, you know, a lot of the things you do, like say at the Erie Children's Cripple. Erie Crippled Children's Society. Yeah, I don't even know if that place exists anymore, um, you know. Or, but, or like the Intermediate School District or right, whatever it is, right. right? Whatever they call it now. But this this was socialism. These were free socialized <gasps> programs, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, available to any kid who needs who them. Who needs them. But meanwhile, everything we've tried to do with the kids some has been like... Some privatized BS. Has been some, pri- some public-private thing, some... Some private, half privatizing, and it, there's got a lot of gates on it. Uh, gates, right? It's and, all about the gatekeeping so and restrictions even, right? and paperwork and limits and whatnot. Oh, but the thing I was getting at yeah, is sorry. the stuff you do is actually normal childhood play, almost entirely. 
It's almost entirely like, at the. You mean at, at my therapy? Well, at your therapy, at any therapy, most at of your the speech therapy. therapy, right? Well, like it's um, they would have me do like little sing song games and like sing. Yes, yeah. no, no, that so, that kind of like uh, therapy for coordination, physical therapy for kids. It's like playing Largely baseball. Is. It's like kicking o- a ball. It's OT. Right. It's, that's what my mom did. Right. She so, was an occupational therapist. Most of what she did with adults. Was just get them to do crafts, do crafts and like, play and yeah. which is actually it's replacing the like traditional handiwork that they would have handicraft that they would have been doing, doing. just as members of, of a, a community of a, of a community, the farm community or whatever. You whatever. know, they do things Weaving with their community. hands. Yeah, they do stuff with your hands, and, you, and, this and is, it helps your brain. It helps your brain. So, so it's not like I don't know how to have my children play, right? Right. It's more like. Again, I'd like a trained professional to help me close these gaps. You've because been, with Eleanor, for example, you've been wanting someone to say, show me an exercise that helps with this specific thing. Like she's got one leg she favors, right? right. That's weak. That she does. So what can I do to help her with that? Right. right. Like, is there any specific Well, thing? it turns out. It turns out, yeah. And so we did. And so in that way, these specific gaps... I'd like to know, so what's the game, what's the play, what's the activity right. to close that gap? Right. Because you know what? I am I know I read a lot. Yes. I'm not actually interested in becoming an MD or a speech pathologist or an right. occupational therapist or a physical therapist. Yeah. I have a job and I like it. I'd like the professionals to do that job I for me. Yeah. Right? I don't know how to help Sam with his stuttering. Right. I, I feel like if I really work with if i tried to work hard with sam on his stuttering mm-hmm. i might just make him more anxious it could be worse make it worse i have a suspicion that music education will help sam yeah. and possibly choral singing or even just right. something where um he has to coordinate his i feel like something where he has to coordinate his hands and his brain yeah. will help with some of the wiring for his speech yeah there's lots, but, you know, lots of things there's lots of things but you they're, know what they're again all tied together probably any one of those i'm not ways. a professional there's probably someone who could just tell me. Uh, probably any one of those approaches could help. Could help. Get all this wiring to work in, in, in unison. You right. Know? Because that's really what's Because going actually on. that was a lot of my speech therapy was, uh, was music. I would, would, they, I would have me sing. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Because it was easier to sing the sentence than to say the sentence. Yeah. Right? And they would have me sing like uh, those tongue twisters. But, and once I could uh, sing tongue okay. twisters, I could just speak them. Benjamin needs that. Oh. He's, he's so, the one with this, the real, the real, the real stutter. stutter. Yeah. yeah. Um, an avid talker. Yeah. Yeah. But he's got quite a stutter. Take, so, take him three minutes to get a, to get a sentence and you're really trying not to just. <laughs> not to laugh. Not, not to, to laugh. Away, not, not to, to get, yeah. not to, you to, know. Yes. So that, that challenge remains. I'm, I, I'm not really spent on it. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's frustrating. It's, this thing is like taking what's, years. What's really frustrating is you, every time you think you've got it nailed down and you've got an appointment. Okay. Like you get a phone call and it's like, oh, sorry, you're not actually eligible. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we have to reevaluate. <laughs> because someone's like, hey, we might have to spend money. You know? this. Oh, no, yeah, never mind, never mind. It's, it's all yeah. about the cost cutting. It's all about the cost cutting. <sighs> and I think what it may come down to, it may come down to figuring out how to, how to see... The extraordinarily expensive private therapists, yes, um, out of pocket, yes. But these evaluations are about fifteen hundred dollars per child. Yeah, and we—that's the thing. We're, okay, we could can't do it. We can't even consider that. But until yeah, we've got the house situation the taken right. care of, and we're still going to have twenty five thousand dollars in debt, debt plus. 20 th- plus credit card debt and everything else. Everything else. So that's what, it's, and, and it's not so much that I, I don't think their skills are worth that kind of money. Right. It's just uh, plunk, plunking it down the last five years has not been, been possible. possible. No. And so, and uh, ostensibly there are all these state services that should be available. And we have to, we have to make hard choices like triage, like, okay, who's got the biggest unmet need, need. you know? And who goes right. first, right? And because we just and and that's the thing, it we shouldn't have to do shouldn't that. Shouldn't have to do that because even if we do this kind of triage ourselves and, and say, okay, you know what, Benjamin gets speech therapy he's first because he's the worst, you know. Then Sam, or, or whatever. Or Sam first because he has less time, or or, or whatever, or whatever. However we do it, 
but that also means like, well, oh, guess what? We didn't have that money to put towards our retirement, you know, and our emergency fund and our everything else. Right. Because there's so much I regret, like, that we don't. There's so many things that I had that I haven't been able to give our kids. Yeah. And my parents did not make a lot they of money. They were not wealthy people. Right. But they traveled with us, you mm-hmm. know. I got to see the country. We traveled out west, you yeah. know. And the idea of trying to do that now with our resources we have, you know, it's just, just impossible. Mind-boggling. Yeah. Just mind-boggling yeah. to even consider. All right. So so that's where that is, like family, health, et cetera. If, Next, uh, up soon there's a current affairs article I want to talk about, which is how yeah. basically every parent deserves socialism. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, current. Have, have we subscribed yet? That's a great. No, it's another. It's some it's great like journalism. The Harney's tea. It's another cash expense that cash I'm holding expense. off on. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Can we do it? No, I just. I. I mean, yeah. I don't even go out for. I don't even like. I don't even want to spend two dollars on a coffee out. Yeah, you know, seems like that. too much. Seems like too much. And I'm not talking about Starbucks. I'm talking about yeah, no, not that. I'm talking about a a coffee, coffee, like a, just coffee, just basic yeah. coffee. I don't even want to eat. I don't. I haven't even been like. I don't want to buy frozen burritos for lunch. I don't even want to spend eighty nine cents on a frozen burrito because burrito we're watching our money Could this be week. Close. Could be close. Yeah. So yeah, that's so how things are. It's how things are. Yeah, but yeah. We got three squares, place to sleep. Well, not three squares, but we we everyone's fed. <laughs> <laughs> if I, everyone's if I don't fed. eat lunch all these days. It's, well, you know, it's yeah. I'm well fed, and I have yes. a place to sleep. We're well fed. We have a place to sleep. Can't complain. I have a place to have heartburn. Isn't that yeah, good? Toss and turn with heartburn. Yeah. So with people you love. With people we love. Oh, and and I, I didn't talk about it this time with our reading and watching but we've been reading the kids of the fellowship of the ring yeah. and that's been a blast and i blast. really and i'm happy that i could be here and do that mm-hmm. okay truly a gift all right so are we um, done we're just about done we don't have any feedback but we want the millennials to come on we uh, are trying to reach out and broaden our plans for the podcast um because we keep having these like oh we're not prepared and it also it sometimes turns into uh, okay. We're we're also not inspired, right, right? And one of the reasons we're not inspired is because we're not getting engaged with other people, right? On it. So we want to hear from millennials about so, what's going on. So we would like to have regular guests. Reality. We'd like to have special guests. We'd like to do interviews and whatnot. And we have to be. It has to be a situation where we can do this kind of thing without us having to do eight hours of homework. Ideally in a given week because that's just not happening because um, we could do eight hours of homework over the course of a month sure that could happen like we can finish a book yeah but it's but yeah it's that's... generally just not happening it's the prep time it's the quiet downtime down to do some writing or whatnot mm-hmm. that's not happening right and if i just write the podcast it won't represent your interests yeah if you just write the podcast it doesn't fully represent my interests yeah and if you and I just rep- write the podcast, <laughs> it may not be fully interesting to our listeners. Right. Right. And so, so yeah, again, we want to sound the call. And my Facebook feed is going to be uh, uh, pretty confrontational now, demanding millennials to come forward and be counted. We want to get people on the show remotely, especially over the issues of millennial economics. Yeah. Which are, you know, what are you, if you're, consider yourself a millennial um, of, in how are that you age bracket. How are you making things happen and what, how can you and mm-hmm. what can the rest of the world do to help this generation that's been uh, uniquely... Um, uniquely fucked. <laughs> uh, harmed. That so, too. Anyway. So we're, yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be recruiting a little more and we're really happy to have the guests that we've had on already. I think we're going to try and do a regular thing with Chris, if he'll, uh, if he'll, uh, he was up for that, which I'm pretty sure he is. He, he seemed to have a good time. So, yeah. uh, but you know, he's got a family and a job yeah, too, so yeah. he's got time commitments, but mm-hmm. we'll see if, if he'll, uh, if he can get the time for that time. Yeah. to, uh, to share with us. And, um, okay. I think we're going to head out. Gonna wrap. It's we have miles to miles to go before we sleep. 
You've been listening to the Grace and Paul Podcast. Check out the show blog at podcast.blogspot.com where you can leave comments or search for the Grace and Paul Podcast on Facebook or YouTube. <laughs>